Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time for another Kabaya Transformer review this month. And now we're going to take a look at the only duo that I had on the poll. We're taking a look at a pair of Godmasters. On the left we have Hydra, and on the right we have Buster. Of course, these guys were released in America, different colored, and labeled as Power Masters. Hydra over here was, of course, the Power Master Darkwing. And Buster would instead be made, released here as Dreadwind. So as you can see, there is a significant difference color-wise between the two. As these Kabaya figures down here are done as their Japanese counterparts. Hasbro instead redid them in these two larger forms for the American audience to make them probably look more intimidating or evil or something. Kind of hard to say. But we're going to take a look at each one of them individually and compare them with their larger counterparts. Of course, as we should point out as well that these two, the two little guys here, can be seen in action in the animated, in animated form in the series Super God Master Force. Do highly recommend that to all of you out there. Now, let's take a look at Hydra. Okay, taking a look now here at Hydra. Let's bring him closer to the camera so we can get a good look at him. As you can see, there's a lot of predominantly red that was absent on the other toy. The other toy was made available in Japan as a mail-away. And, of course, the other big difference is, as you saw, the wings are pretty visible here on Hydra, whereas on the larger toy here, Darkwing, the wings are folded backwards. This is due mainly to the smaller scale that Hydra here is designed at. His larger counterpart is essentially the same toy as Darkwing, so the transformation would be smoother on the larger toy, but in this scale it's a, and the way he's built, it's a little hard to get the wings just to fold back. I'm sure if somebody wanted to put the design efforts into it, it might have been possible, but hey, we're not here to criticize it that badly. These are interesting little toys, especially if you can find them. Of course, one advantage of this, especially since it's a Japanese exclusive, getting this scaled version of the figure is considerably easier and cheaper on the wallet than trying to track down the full-size toy, so do bear that in mind. Oops, legs coming apart here on I me. Mean, it's supposed to, but not right now. Okay, articulation-wise... He's pretty limited. I mean, you can raise the arm up about so far and bring the arm straight down like so. That's just due to the, the wings getting in the way, so. And as for the legs, you can bend his legs out to the sides, going so far as to even do a full splits. So... That's Hydra in a nutshell. Moment here, we'll transform him. All right, now, now to transform him into his alternate mode. We'll first remove his guns. We'll fold his arms down to the side. But we're also going to fold the whole arm and wing assembly to the back. And next, move his legs out just a little bit and remove the lower leg. And while we got him like this, we're going to take his head and just push it to the side to put it inside of him. And then move it, what's left of his legs into the full split. 
We're going to set him aside for a moment so that we can bring up his legs. All right, to get his legs ready, what we got to do is reach back here on the back side, push these little fins that are sticking out down all the way in. And as you'll notice here on the side, they've got a hinge. So you just fold it, fold the leg at the hinge, like so. And now, we're going to take the body again, and then we're going to plug these in all the way and make sure that these little knot, these little bars that are protruding out from his feet connect in here at the shoulder. So, get it in semi-tight. You don't want it too tight or you'll have a fit getting it loose. And now that you've done that, we're going to take the body and twist it gently until it's lined up vertically or as close as we can get with him like so then we'll fold the arms and wings back over to lock it in place we turn him over right side up and we fold the cockpit out snap it into lock it into place make sure as well that if the tail is open that it's folded together like so then you can take the guns and plug them into these holes on the side of the arm Oh, the big hole, not the elbow joint. And there you have it. He's in his jet mode. Hydra here is a tornado attack fighter. Just the same as his larger counterpart. Which you may have noticed... He does have the small engine detail, just like a real Godmaster or Power Master, and it is removable. Get him up close there. And for those of you that enjoy this little gimmick, his legs do fold out and down, like so. Marvel at his cuteness, folks. <laughs> now, for some of you who may have seen my one, uh, uh, seen some of my other Power Master videos, and I do apologize to any Power Master fans that I have not done a lot of them. I do have all of them. I do have them all complete. I just haven't worked them into the schedule. If there's any you do wish to see in the near future, please do use comment section down there tell me which one you want to see and i'll see what i can arrange to get some on the schedule but as i was saying you may have noticed that i didn't start him out in the plane mode and transform him to the robot well unlike the larger toy it's uh, this guy is totally useless he is not needed at all to transform this thing from either mode whereas the larger toy you did need to a degree, the Power Master engine guy to transform them. Now, of course, how does he look next to the big guy? Actually, he's not too bad of a representation of the larger toy. And the biggest difference, of course, is that the larger toy holds the guns in the fist of the robot's arms, whereas the smaller version here, is, since the fists do not rotate, he has a hole in the arms, so the guns are a little more recessed inward. And, truth be told, I kind of like it on this one more than on the big one here. I think they stick out just a little too far. Of course, some of you might want to see how the Power Master guy looks side by side with his larger ver larger brother. So, set him down there and try to wiggle this guy loose here. Ah, there we 
go. Almost broke a nail there. Uh, the things we do for our YouTube channels. Let's see, there's the full size figure, and there's the Kabaya one. Let's put him in the whole hand there so you can see him pretty clearly. And, well, it's hard to tell the detail just due to the small size and the solid color. But, pivot him to the side a bit, and I don't know if it's coming very well on camera, but the helmet is somewhat reminiscent to the larger toy, so that's, that's a decent attention to detail that we can appreciate. We'll just plug him back in. And then, of course, flip this guy back. And in we go. But all in all, again, despite the colors, I like the guns on this one. The only other thing I don't like about the little one, besides the fact that he keeps falling apart here on camera, quit doing that is this detail right up here for the cockpit. The unfortunate part is that the cockpit on the small toy is a sticker. Now, you may remember earlier in the month I did review Fortress Maximus that had some chrome covering and to cancel out some of the stickers. I think Hydra here would have benefited from that. As far as I'm aware of, there is not a chrome version, and I think I would have preferred that for the cockpit. I mean, as you see on the larger toy, we got some transparent plastic, and that looks better considerably than the sticker. And I know there are some fans out there that are very sloppy with their stickers, and they don't care for it. Me, I just don't care for these the obvious bulges that may, and such that make it pretty clear it's a sticker. I think the chrome covering would have went better. But of course, sound out what you think in the comments below while we switch it up and get Buster. Alright, now we got Buster here on the scene. Let's bring him up close so you can get a good look at him. And again, we got the same sticker cockpit issue. It's even worse on him since the cockpit is visible almost all the time on him. How does he do articulation wise? Well, he's more or less like his larger counterpart. The only arm, he does have some arm articulation, but as you can see, it's very, very small. But he does bend at the elbow at 90 degrees, so he can at least aim it. Look like he's aiming his guns. And his legs do fold apart at the sides. And unfortunately on him, when you move them too far out, they pop chest piece out. So, while you can get him to do a full split, it's more or less recommended you only go like that and it won't move the central cockpit it won't move the jet pieces out well let's give him a side-by-side -side comparison with dreadwind here don't move him out of camera of course, the big problem here with Dreadwind is by keeping his wings in the back, it keeps pushing the engine down where it's visible. It really isn't that much of a happy medium on keeping all of his kibble hidden. But, the small one does improve upon him for the arm movement because on the larger toy here, you can't move the arms at all. You can only bend at the elbow. So he does have that as an improvement. And you can't even move the legs at all on him. So 
The small guy does win out against the big one in terms of articulation. It's somewhat of a surprise there, folks. You would expect the bigger toy to have more than the small one, but in this case, the small guy wins out hands down. Now let's get ready to transform him. Now, to transform Buster, first thing we got to do is, of course, remove his guns. Alright, then we're going to lower his elbow, bend him at the elbows, get his arms lowered. And then we fold the wing assembly back. The next, we're going to fold up the chest piece. You can see inside he's pretty hollow in here. Down here at the bottoms of his feet, we're going to push the red plastic pieces inward. Like so. And then we're going to rotate his legs all the way up and under the cockpit. And then fold the wings back down to the sides. Then we turn him over. We remove the engine piece and plug it in into the very back. And then lastly we will attach his guns into these holes on the side of his arms. Put it here at the camera so you can actually see it. And uh, there we have it. He's in his jet mode. An F-16 Fighting Falcon. Once again, with a shoddy label on the cockpit. But all in all, he's a pretty good representation of this classic American fighter jet. And of course, just like on the other one, he does also have the removable Power Master figure. Reach over here and get the other one. The other one for you so you all can see it. And then again, it's kind of hard to tell if the detail's coming through here, but the helmet detail is also pretty similar, so that's nice. All in all, it's not bad. It'd just be nice if there was a little more color to it. That's just my way of thinking with it, folks. I wouldn't mind seeing a little splash of color on these guys. Might help so that, that way they don't get lost in the carpet and sucked up in your vacuum cleaner. But, let's do the next best thing. Let's see how he looks side by side. With the larger toy. And as you can see, despite the color differences, he is a pretty decent replica of the larger toy. One downside is that the small toy keeps these little stabilizers out that are normally concealed in on the larger toy's alternate form. And of course, as we pointed out earlier, the cockpit is a sticker. It's worse on this one due to the fact that the cockpit is always in view, so you're always going to see it in robot or plane mode instead of being this clear plastic that we got on the big toy. But, all in all, it's not a bad representation. It does a pretty good job of looking like the larger toy. What more could you want? Alright, some of you out there may be going, Hey, Sparks, to the right, right there, two airplanes is enough fun for me. But we're not done yet. Oh, no, sir, we are not done yet. Especially for any of you who are familiar with these two toys, they do have a combined form. And these two little guys can do it as well. For starters, we need to remove their guns. And, of course, as you'll notice... There are posts and opposing posts and holes 
on the gun, so after we remove them, we are going to combine them together, like so. That's the one guy's guns. Set them aside for a moment. The other ones. Whoops. Pulled his hand off, too. That bag on there. Combine his guns. Set them aside. Alright, now for Hydra here, we split the tail open a little bit. Tell him to quit leaping, falling apart on me. And fold the engine back. Like so. Here on Buster, we remove the engine piece, mount it top side, and then come by. As you can see here, Buster's got a couple of small holes here, and there's a couple of posts here on Hydra. You just connect them together, like so. And here then on Hydra, we're going to fold out his wings so that they're straight. And then you take each set of guns and just mount them in into these little exposed holes. And there you have it. Now the Japanese form, in the Japanese media, they referred to this as their dark wings form. So that's obviously where the American one gets its name. Nice combined super jet. But of course, they call themselves Dread Wing here in the American form. Or at least the more worldwide form. I need to quit stopping and stop saying American form. But it's not a precise matchup per se, because I mean the Hydra's cockpit is slightly shorter than that on Darkwing, and of course Darkwing here has the added tail fin that comes up with it, which is not translated onto the smaller on the smaller toy. But all in all, it is a very close approximation for it and of course like I said since this one is a representation of the Japanese toy and the Japanese toy is very difficult to find on the worldwide market and even if you do find it it is going to be expensive especially if you do not live in Japan so if you need if you want one for your collection, this is a cheaper alternative to it. Of course, what do I think of it? I do like it, folks. I mean, it is an interesting gimmick. It was one that was definitely hyped up a lot on the checklists for the Power Masters when they were released, especially here in the United States. That was hyped up a lot on their checklist to encourage us to buy the two toys so that we could merge them together like this. The one downside for the worldwide release was that these guys, for some reason, even though they were available separately, they never released them together in a box set. Whereas in Japan, you could get the full-size version of this toy in a box together. A combiner set gift box, if you will. Of course, they were also sold separately as well. So, that could have been done. It just it would have been nice to have seen the larger toy in its more worldwide release get that kind of a distribution. But hey, we're not here to talk about the big one. We'll do that one another day sometime. We're here to talk about this one. And this one, like I said, it's a nice representation. It's not perfect, as, you is, as you've seen throughout the video, comparing it to the larger toy. It is not perfect, but it is a very good representation 
of it. And it's estimated that when the two of them were in this combined form together, you had twice the firepower and twice the brains to go with it. So, and early on in the Master Force anime, before a lot of the other God Masters did appear on the good guy side, the Cybertron side, or Autobots if you would rather, these guys were a very formidable attack force before the good guys got some more God Masters. So, this would definitely bring some more oomph and punch to your Decepticon or Destron army, so... Yeah, I would say, especially if you really would want one of these, I'd say try to find them. And of course, before we forget about it and close out the review entirely, you guys should see the boxes. Here's Hydra's box. As you can see, they were also sold alongside a later version of Optimus Prime that was not made available in the States. And of course, here on the one side, there's Buster. And right here on the back side, it shows off the gimmick of combining the two into the larger form. And on the inside here, you get the instructions. It shows you how to build him. And then, of course, transform him into the robot. And then, these four steps up here is how to prepare him for being combined. And then when you have the other one, have Buster, you do the whole combination thing, just like that. And lastly, we'll get, here's Buster's box. Once again, same stuff on this side, Optimus Prime up there. With a very, very tiny version of Hot Rod. Yes, that is a little tiny hot rod there. Mm -hmm. There you go. See that side? Same thing over here, basically. So it's got the different text here for Buster instead of Hydra. Again, I don't read Japanese. One of these days, it's kind of on the bucket list. And then again, assembly instructions. If you're wondering about how long it takes to assemble these guys... About, on average, half hour, 45 minutes, really doesn't take all that long. Unless you're all thumbs, then it might take longer. You just gotta be careful with handling some of the pieces. Since, like the legs here on the little Godmaster. Those are very tiny, easy to lose. So have yourself a nice work table. Preferably, the kitchen table will also work, since you don't need glue. I'm sure for many of you, your significant other would appreciate that. Anyway, there's the transformed robot instructions. And then on the last part of the box, get him prepared to be the front of the super plane. Merge him together with Hydra, and there you have it. So you see... All in all, like I said earlier, it's a nice representation. I do like it. Both the small planes swooshed pretty good, and as you can imagine, just look here with this. The big one, big combined form, does swoosh pretty good too. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it certainly would be a worthwhile addition to anyone's collection. And that concludes my review of the Kabaya version of Hydra and Buster. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget as well, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already joined up with us. Please also consider sharing your thoughts of Hydra and Buster in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.